and check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the steiners and remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel on cable television. Coleman was also the original weathercaster on the ABC Network morning program, Good Morning America. For many years, he was a... Uh, full professional member of the American Meteorological Society, he's a meteorologist, obviously, and was once honored as Broadcast Meteorologist of the Year. Coleman had a 61-year career in television, extending from the campaign uh, of, uh, from Champaign, Illinois, uh, to Milwaukee, Chicago, New York City. And uh, Coleman has become very active in his efforts to counter the global warming climate change frenzy. His studies of the climate data convinced him that there is no significant man-made global warming and uh, his beloved science meteorology has been hijacked by a cadre of politicians and environmentalists and the scientists who uh, they generously fund to provide scientific papers supporting their failed theory. When I was a kid, I'm 81 years old. When I was a kid, a thermometer was a little stick of wood with a little tube of mercury attached to it. And the best you could possibly read the temperature was within one or two degrees. I mean, its accuracy was <laughs> pretty questionable. And now they're telling us we have records because of hundreds of a degree. You've got to be kidding. If you look at the pattern over, the, let's say, the last thousand years, temperatures have gone up and down. We had the medieval warm period. We had the little ice age. And you see that little squiggle on the extreme right-hand side of your screen, the last little red squiggle on this chart? That's the warming of the 20th century into the 21st century. It is nothing. 
it is insignificant. And it is far less than the middle of the warm period. And they're telling us it's the warmest Earth has ever been. You know why that is? They've manipulated the data. When you say to people, what's wrong with warming? And most people have to stop and think for a long time. And almost invariably, they'll say, well, sea level's going to rise. That's why Gore made it such a big part of his movie. Because he knew that was a fundamental concern. Well, and that's something they've been putting in textbooks. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and, and of course, again, what you're playing to is people's fears. And of course, then you can have, uh, aggravate that by saying, well, most of the world's population live along the shorelines and, you know, in the, in the delta areas of the world. And, um, and so, so you can exploit that as, as Gore did uh, so very well. Well, they do whatever they can. It's, it's, it's a screaming outrage. Uh, this is our federal government, NOAA. The National Weather Service at its National Data Climate Center down in Charleston, South Carolina. They, these people have manipulated the temperatures four times. And in the process, they have made the past cooler so the present is comparatively warmer. Only by a degree or two, but enough for them to scream and holler about global warming. It is never useful to propose or take any action based on a lie. Because when the lie gets found out, and you then say to people, but we want to be the champions of the environment, people are going to turn around and say, you lied to us about global warming, you might be lying to us about everything else, we're not going to listen to you anymore. So lying as a basis for action on the environment is not the way forward. The truth is that in the Western world, we have largely put the environment to right. So I heard about Al Gore being elected to the U.S. Senate after he wrote a book about climate change. And I said to the man who worked for me, a man named Joe DeLeo, who is a certified consulting meteorologist of great re reputation, and he, was, he worked with me as my uh, scientist uh, helper when I was doing Good Morning America and then went with me to the Weather Channel. I said to Joe, I said, what's this all about? I'm very skeptical because I, was, I saw this whole Ice Age thing. And he said, let's research it. And we began to research. And the more and more we researched in the early ages of computers before the internet was easy, we finally came to the real facts that how it all happened and how, what started Al Gore. And I'm speaking to you today from San Diego and just a few miles from me is where the modern problem began at the Scripps Oceanographic Institution. And there, uh, a man named Roger Ravel and a man named Hans Seuss I came up with a study that said, yes, global warming was being caused by carbon dioxide. Uh, it was a small study, it wasn't a big deal, but it started something back in the, smog, uh, fifth, the smoggy 50s. But we've cleaned up the atmosphere hugely since then with great technology and science. But never mind, uh, that started something. And Roger Revelle then went to Harvard. He left the Scripps Oceanographic Institute in anger went to Harvard and started the Center for Population Studies. But he talked about this problem with carbon dioxide in his class. And in the front row of his very first class, who was the freshman student? Al Gore. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to find a way of making Western countries do what the UN tells them, what this new global government tells them. The court, uh, at least to start with anyway, is not supposed to have any power over individuals. It, you know, they wouldn't dare, frankly, they would be very stupid if they tried to come after me, for instance, and say, you are a prominent skeptic, therefore we're going to put you on trial for your life because of your skepticism. Because they know perfectly well that in a courtroom where I can cross-examine them when they come out with their drivel, and I can say, where is your evidence for it? And I can then take their evidence apart, show how it's been tampered with, etc. They know that any, any judge worth his salt looking at the evidence is going to find in our favour, just as we did when we took Al Gore's wretched movie to court. The estimates of how much CO2 humans produce are produced by the IPCC. In other words, they're the source of it. Well, where do they get their information? Well, the different countries tell them, oh, well, we're burning this much fossil fuel. How do you know that? When um, the cap and trade thing first started, they suddenly discovered Germany were cheating because they wanted to get more 
cap and trade credits, so they were overestimating the amount of CO2 that they were. They also found Turkey was doing the same thing. So, I mean, I simply don't trust any UN statistics. So the IPCC figures of how much CO2 humans are producing, the latest figure they gave was 7.5 gigatons. Well, a gigaton is a billion tons, so it sounds like a lot, seven and a half billion tons. But we produce that much, but the first thing you've got to do is say, okay, but in our crops that we grow, in the trees that we plant, we remove 50% of what we produce. So the actual, if we take their numbers, the actual amount that we're putting into the atmosphere is, is half of that. But if you look at the long-term temperatures and CO2 of planet Earth as determined by the ice cores dug near in Antarctica, near the South Pole, you find that the CO2 has been up and down, and it tends to follow temperatures, not vice versa. In other words, CO2 doesn't drive the temperatures up. The temperatures cause the CO2 to Sure, increase. and in Al Gore's film, he, this was found in British court, for those that don't know, uh, uh, that he had flipped, basically, where he has temperature following CO2. The CO2 issue, uh, in terms of, of um, the way that they play it, the way that they put it out, uh, it, when you put it into the natural context of what we know about CO2, uh, I mean, just for example, Roy Spencer, um, out of the University of Alabama at Huntsville, just published a very interesting paper showing that um, the CO2, well, we knew this before, but the, the ocean's ability to absorb or release CO2 is a function of its temperature. The colder the water is, the more CO2 it can absorb, which is an interesting question about Arctic waters. But um, what he showed was that as the Pacific Ocean temperatures vary, so the level of CO2 at Mauna Loa varies but they're not attributing it to that. They're attributing it to, oh, well, it's going up at Mount Alo because of human contribution to the atmosphere. And uh, so just that paper alone blows the whole thing out of the water. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. The IRS is their collection agency. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Jeff Duncan says he saw IRS special agents using semi-automatic rifles at a gun range. Now he wants answers to why the agency needs that type of firepower. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Know your history and you will know your enemy. Infowars.com I'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And 
what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up. from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming oil.